giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Detroit Championship Recap. Let's jump right in, and afterwards, we will be doing the FTC Top 25. Reporting for First Updates Now FTC, I'm Nathan. And I'm Ethan. Tonight, we have one very special guest, Andrew from Team 1037 Sigma, and the current world record holder. Uh, as you probably heard during the Houston recap, uh, we have a ton of absolutely awesome giveaways from GoBuilder tonight. So if you haven't already, uh, go check out their site. Go check them out on social media because they have been doing a lot of giveaways here on Fun. Uh, so we already gave out a, a go-to bundle and cascading kit. Uh, but during this next hour, we will be giving away a linear actuator kit as well as the low channel, but low U channel bundle. Uh, and the brand new Strafer chassis kit. So Tyler, can you remind our audience about how they can win these giveaways? Yeah, so the first one, uh, which uh, will be the U-Channel bundle, uh, we'll give you that keyword in just a moment here. If you're interested in winning this, make sure you click that follow button on top of the screen. to be following all First Updates Now shows. That's your uh, chance, that's your ticket to get in, really. Uh, as mentioned, it'll be a keyword to type in. If you do choose to help support the channel, help us stay loud, live, and independent in the community, you can do, go ahead and give us a subscription. <coughs> Excuse me, you can do so for free through Twitch Prime, or if you or your parents have Amazon Prime, link it to Twitch. You get a free subscription credit every month to use, and we'd be delighted to have you use it here on First Updates Now. Otherwise, uh, it's just a few bucks a month. If you don't mind uh, dropping us a, uh, I don't know, what do kids drink nowadays? The price of a large Red Bull. Uh, then you can, uh, I don't know, is that right? Uh, but if you sure. choose to do that for a few bucks a month, then uh, you can help support us as well. We definitely appreciate all support here of First Updates Now. All right, and speaking of which, we'll start right off the bat with the, that U-channel bundle. Sorry, the low-side U-channel bundle. So if you'd like to type the keyword for that in the chat, we'll do low, low, low. Three words and with a space in between each. Uh, so, all right, while well, you guys type that in, Andrew, do you want to get us started with the Edison division? Sure. So kicking it off with the Edison division, we have our number one prospect coming from the uh, – Coming from our voting, gluten free, kicking it off with a pro break in the first match with 10, 4, 3, 5 circuit breakers. This this is one of five of gluten free's world records on the Edison side. Only we five. Can. Only five. You know? <laughs> and, if, and if you don't know about these world records, they set it in their first match. They then broke their record in the second match. Then in their third match of the day, they broke it again. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, oh man. my God. And we also had Circuit Breakers, their alliance partner, and the winning first pick at the Iowa State Championships. We had them over running Depot, which was pretty unusual for them. Um, I know they were mainly creator at Iowa State, so it was really fun for, to see them kind of doing an unusual thing. And then over on the Blue Alliance as well, we have their alliance captain from Iowa State, the Weapons of Mass Construction. So, yeah. It was quite a match. We just see them running away at auto before anybody else really does much of anything. It's really pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. mo moving on to our standing world record, we have once again, gluten free one, 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 five, as well as my team one, zero, zero, three, zero, seven Sigma with the now standing world record of six forty two, which was later tied. <laughs> it was. So here we can now see, we see Andrew's robot. It's a very interesting design. It's one that was not very, or I don't think we've seen before, aside from the Knack, who focused on the other crater. Um, again, it's another Iowa team, uh, two more Iowa teams. We, we decided to go for this strategy after changing from our old robot, seeing a, a place for an angled slide on the depot. For sure. As well as pulling from the opponent's crater. Didn't and, have much time to optimize, but. Yeah, no, it worked totally well. 
perfectly well. And if you uh, guys haven't noticed yet, if you look in the back right corner of Andrew, there is actually that robot that we're seeing on screen right now. Um, there go. He's also got a second robot somewhere in that room. Uh, maybe you'll see it on stream later. Um, but, you know, this match was awesome. It was great to see. I especially loved watching uh, your team, Andrew, Seven Sigma, because it was a perfect Debo strategy in that you took what uh, crater bots are perfect at and that they don't move a lot and you adapted that to a crater bot. So as we see right here, uh, Seven Sigma really just never moves. And also uh, with kind of a perfect double whammy here is they're not uh, in jeopardy of breaking any of the rules in terms of blocking parts of the playing field uh, because there is a perfectly uh, open path in between the uh, red uh, silver mineral side and blue gold mineral side for the red robots to cross. Uh, so there's zero way that they're breaking any rules here, uh, which is a double whammy because they're never going to have to move. Absolutely never. Um, for sure. So they have the really advantage of they don't have to wait for their vertical lift to come back down before they can get right back into the crater, which is the big disadvantage of driving back and forth is you have to drive back. It was really interesting seeing our when we were going through the strategy process for this robot, just the week at, weekend after, we saw the Knack on Wisconsin's uh, stream doing the same thing from the other crater, and we were like, whoa, hopefully they don't switch to our crater. <laughs> for sure. So, both before we look into our uh, actual standings at the end, I want to highlight a few other teams first. Crack and Pinion with an absolutely incredible, not only auto, but their tele -up game is just so strong. This video is them clearing a crater solo with a little bit of help from an opponent on depot side. But for the most part, entirely on their own, just clearing this crater all on their own. Did you say Crack and Pinion? I did say Crack and Pinion. <laughs> Uh, Crack and Pinion was super awesome, and they gave me the extra side plate to their old robot. Uh, so here I have it on stream. Um, so congrats to them, and thank you very much to them. They asked me to show it on stream if I wanted to or hang it up in my room. So it might end up back there behind me so you can see it in subsequent streams. So shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, no, 8680 had an awesome robot. Um, kind of sad that they didn't uh, make it to the final field, but that Edison was a super competitive division. Uh, as we've been talking about and as we will continue talking about. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so another team that I wanted to look at is our, is the Land Bros 9971, who we all know ended up as first seed and ended up winning Detroit. But here's a, here's a qual match. I believe it's match 146, really highlighting him and his auto and his tele-up game on his own. Mm -hmm. And he scored. Their partner was not as fantastic, but... He scored a lot in Teleop this match. So it was really, really incredible to see kind of just a robot do what it was, it's was it been doing all season and just score some points. Something that's cool to note that we will probably keep noting about 9971 is that they are just a straight vertical slide. So they don't have angled deposit slides like a lot of the other really, really strong crater teams. And that gave them a lot of flexibility when they switched over and played Depot for elimination matches. It's, yeah, it was really, really incredible. You know, they, they, uh, Landbros are an incredible team. It's uh, kind of amazing that essentially one guy can make it back to Ford Field for the second year in a row. I don't really know what he did in VV and earlier, uh, but I assume that he was quite competitive seeing mm -hmm. how well he's done the last two years. Yeah, I so believe he... Velocity Vortex, he was at Worlds, but I don't think he was Rescue. And I also don't think he was picked in Velocity Vortex, but a lot of people think he should have been. <laughs> I think that is correct. Yeah. So how do you guys think that there wasn't a very super competitive Red Depot bot in this match? Do you think that had a big effect on the overall score? Um, potentially. It, it's it's really difficult for a lot of alliances when there's two hard crater bots who can't really either adapt to, to the uh, far side and go on to Depot. Yeah. For sure. Um, it, it was a lot of it. We can see, actually, one of the things that happened... A decent amount of worlds was uh, the red side has a depot bot that kind of just drove around and sometimes got in their partner's way. So that may have hurt them a little bit, but yeah. No, totally. I, and I think just one thing I wanted to point out here is just looking at this match, we see a lot of different robots here, which is kind of awesome to see. I know every robot's kind of got the same principle, so to say, but we see um, on red, we see 12589 going into the crater to collect, which is something that we don't 
really see a whole heck of a lot since it's not as efficient. We see Land Bros using their kind of classic uh, linear slide up with the extension in. Uh, we saw 43.18 with what looked like kind of a cup bot or maybe just a collector bot with an arm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying a whole uh, a lot of attention, <laughs> but those are those are three of the kind of uh, main things we've seen. So it's kind of awesome to see that all played out in one match right there. Mm -hmm. yep. For sure. So now moving on once again to our actual alliance selection portion of the Edison division, we have five teams who come out on top undefeated. In order, these teams are Land Bros, 9971, 8680, Crack and Pinion, 12231, Warrior Tech, 10435, Circuit Breakers, and 11115, Gluten Free. So in NFTC, when, the, when there's so many teams that are undefeated, they get separated by tie-breaking points, which is a sum of their opponent's score, the, or the losing score, rather. And it kind of, it, oddly enough, it ranked, it ranked our, the team that scored five world records at the bottom of this bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, it's so funny just kind of looking at those rankings right there. Sorry to interrupt, Ethan. Um, that the OPR that um, uh, what Gluten Free had was just insane compared to the other teams. I think uh, 374 points. Yeah, 374.7 is what TOA listed at. And the next team, if I'm looking at this close enough, uh, in the top five was like 268. Is that the high? Yeah, 268, which was Land Bros. It's just insane kind of how well, how well uh, Gluten-Free was performing. And that's just two brothers. It's very okay. interesting to see that two of, two of our top five teams are one is two brothers and one is just kind of one guy. Yeah. And it's interesting. I would be interested to see what the effect of scoring for tie-breaking points happened or had on those OPR scores, because I know especially 8680 scored a lot of tiebreaker points, which really doesn't help your OPR at all. So I would be interested to see if that would have changed very much and kind of how those rankings would have been without some of that TBP scoring as well. In, in talking to Gluten Free before our what, what was going to be our world record match, we, were, we talked a lot about whether or not we wanted to score tiebreaking points in order to try and seed them higher or not. But we ended up coming on the conclusion to not do that since they already had so much tie-breaking points that they needed to make up, ending f almost 500, yeah, yeah. almost 500 tie-breaking points below the first seed. So we decided, rather than trying to get gluten-free some tie-breaking points, just to throw up a world record or try to at least. Yeah, and you did. And you yep. did. Yep. I um, believe I mean, over on the blue lines in this match is that Robot Cavs gold too. Yes, it is. Uh, on the Blue Alliance Depot side, it is. Wow. So they were another one of those, and they're one of the surprisingly strong um, angled slide robots at playing Depot. That was pretty un uncommon, aside from maybe you, Andrew, and a couple others. That's the knack on the on the Depot side. Sorry, that was my bad. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, so that's the Wisconsin team that I that we saw just as we were <laughs> going through our design process, and we're like, whoa, that's Hello. that's the same design just from a different spot. It is. Oh, yeah. It, it, it took me a little while to realize that. <laughs> it, and they, that is cool. There is always an interesting dynamic when you have uh, three ro robots pulling from one crater, um, and everybody kind of gets mixed up and has to play differently than they normally do, and it ends up scoring less points a lot of times, which and I think I just... is probably... Yeah, I think that was totally. probably why um, Andrew's team decided to go for far crater, probably. That's exactly yeah. why. Exactly. I would say that last match was kind of funny to look at because we saw just three extended slides just continually going up and up and up and up. Uh, and that's one thing I would kind of want to chat about a little later after we uh, get to the Ochoa division is kind of how do we create games that where we don't see essentially the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I think VV was probably one of the best games in that where Sony, I mean, there is only one, like, yeah, there's not one awesome way to shoot. Um, yeah. So. But yeah, no, this, this game is still really cool to see a team like Gluten Free Max out. I'm not sure if people were watching or really paid attention, but um, <laughs> I, I forgot the match number and I forgot to pull it. There was one match where Gluten Free literally cleared out the entire crater by themselves. They had a 2v1 match where they scored, I think, 420, 405. Thank you. Uh, actually, I will, maybe we'll throw that up on our YouTube at some point because I was actually sitting there filming it when they were doing that match. Um, and it was impressive just sitting there, seeing them like do that. It was insane. Wow. Do you guys want to talk a little, a little bit about the Edison Alliance selections? 
So alliance selection kicked off with, of course, first seed going first and picking gluten free in order to try and secure themselves a win over their division and over Ford Field. And then next we had Crack and Pinion, then picking the third seed Warrior Tech. So that that makes sense, I think, because they really needed a depot bot at that point. Um, I think Crack and Pinion could play pretty good depot, but they were probably the second best creator bot in their division. So that seems like a solid pick to me. Uh, and I, kn- I know OPR isn't the perfect measure, but <laughs> uh, out of just curiosity, do you think Circuit Breakers might have been a better pick? I mean, their OPR is only 10 points higher, uh, according to the Orange Alliance. But um, what do you guys think about that? I think a big factor for Crack and Pinion wasn't pure cycle count, but rather whether uh, Circuit Breakers or Warrior Tech were number one consistent auto and hang, and then number two slow down gluten-free at least a little bit in hopes of trying to pull out a win against them. Yeah, yeah. I can see that for sure. Um, oh, something to note on this video right here. So we have uh, Weapons of Mass Construction kind of driving back and forth in front of the lander, trying to do what we talked about a couple of shows ago, enforcing GS-11, which basically just means you have to always have a path open between the lander and the crater. I don't think it seemed to be as effective as it sounds like it could have been but it was definitely an interesting strategy to try this robot is just insane sorry i'm just like (laughs) staring at it i i saw that's warrior tech right i i saw warrior tech for the first time and i was like holy cow that robot is like four feet off the ground and it's still driving around i never saw them tip i did see a few teams tip which was uh very interesting but they never were they never tipped based off what I saw. They were perfectly balanced. It was pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Were you referring to the Blue Alliance's depot bot? Yes, that might not have been work. Yep, yep, so that was that's, Weapons that's of Mass Construction. Tech. Well, Weapons of Mass Construction, my bad. Yeah, who, but, interestingly they, enough, was also Crack and Pinion's second pick last year at Detroit. Yep, and they were the second pick of their alliance in NSR last year. So they've, they've been allies a lot, which kind of explains a little bit of that pick. I think you play with people you know. That's a huge advantage. I could definitely speak to the play with the people you play with the people you know. I've done that quite a few times this year and last year. For sure. All right. You want to talk a little bit about our third ranked alliance? So our third ranked alliance, I believe, was was that Robo Cavs? No. No, it ended up with Circuit Breakers with um Oh man. Ended up with Circuit Breakers and Team fourteen two seven zero, which was the were they Romanian, the Romanian team which who who really um, excelled at the depot side and, and was a real top prospect for those higher seeds for a second pick. Yeah. Quantum was crazy good for a Romanian team, but, or for any foreign team. Like, that's really pretty unheard of. And we had three international teams in Olims this year, which was really insane. It was so cool seeing Quantum be so competitive. Um, the robot just looks beautiful, though. Um, but it was just really awesome seeing how competitive they were. Their reveal was awesome. Their branding was awesome. Their team was awesome. Um, yeah, I I definitely think that's kind of one thing that's missing in FTC compared to FRC is a really competitive, uh, top notch, um, international team. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that quickly. It was also cool to see uh, pink to the future come back. I know it's pretty hard to come back for a second year in a row, uh, internationally, um, due to the very limited advancement slots. So it was really cool to see them there awesome guys walking around in their pink suits it was i had the opportunity to play with them in a qual match i believe it was it was a lot of fun because they're not only a good team but also real real nice guys they are. <clears throat> and then what was our fourth ranked seed again i can't remember it uh, was 84 79 right right so we, we had robo Cavs gold who we saw a little bit earlier so do you remember who they picked they picked nine ninety seven ninety four ninety four first Wizards oh. which I think was quite interesting. I believe a part of that pick may come from they're both Maryland. Is that correct? I think that yeah. I think so. Yes, that yep, is correct. Both Maryland teams, and they also rounded out their alliance with Team ninety nine fifty six, which is the Knack out of Wisconsin, which is once again that depot angled slide robot that pulls yeah. from their own crater. So they had quite an interesting alliance, kind of unconventional. All right. Yep. Uh, and w- one last thing I just want to talk about. We don't need to discuss it in uh, great lengths, but D-Auths, uh, for those that don't know, there were two kind of confirmed 
I don't, I don't know what the proper terminology is, but I think what I was told is it's confirmed intentional um, uh, deauths uh, that were in uh, two matches that I can tell you about in three seconds. Um, yeah, but that's just so, not nice to. That's not fun to hear. Both the matches are replayed. Uh, if anyone is wondering, it was Qual's uh, 106 and Qual's 67 in Edison. Not cool. Uh, mm-hmm. If you were the one doing that, or if you know the person that were doing it, uh, <laughs> don't do it. It's not awesome. Uh, it, and another thing to mention is just to explain a little bit for people who may not know, a uh, deauth attack is basically just having a computer that kind of pretends to be the driver's station phone in a robot and then asks the robot controller to disconnect. And it's kind of just that simple. So kind of stinks, but sometimes people are not great. So I was good on first to replay those matches. They did the right thing. Well, I'm to be straight up. If I ever, ever caught somebody doing that, I would make it my personal mission to make sure you were never in a first <laughs> match ever again. Yeah. Yeah, it stinks. Uh, and I as, believe uh, there was a coach's meeting about it where they kind of s- talked about it and was, said, hey, uh, if we figure out who this is, that's definitely grounds for removal from first. And yeah, what, I agree. <laughs> what my mentor said is uh, you will be removed from the tournament, you will not participate in first ever again, and your team will not participate in first ever again. Um, it, it really kind of sucks to see teams who have competed or worked all year up to Detroit and then – have teams, other some other individual coming in and then disconnecting them from their robot, and it, it's just kind of really heartbreaking. And and for those still very confused about what a deauth is, I don't know the technical side of it, but all I know is just the very fact that every single robot is named, well, for example, 3507-DS, 3507-RS, it makes it really easy to essentially um, go on your computer and do whatever you need to do. Uh, essentially, yeah. the SSIDs are all identical and predictable, so it makes that so much easier. Um, yep, just don't do that. And as someone in chat pointed out, I think there were there might have been six confirmed attacks, but only two matches were replayed. Um, three matches. So, oh, I was told by the FTAs only two were replayed, but maybe there was three replayed. Um, it's just unfortunate to hear. So let's not do that. Uh, on a <laughs> happier note, though, uh, let's move on to Ochoa, but let's see who won our first giveaway of the night. Yeah. Right. So the giveaway for the low side U channel bundle from our friends at GoBuilder.com. You have to type in low, low, low for your keyword. And the winner of that is going to be uh, Agent Pyra. Congratulations, Ooh. Agent Pyra. Make sure, uh, of course, with all of our winners, you have to reach out to First Updates now either on Twitch uh, or on our Discord with your uh, shipping information so we can send that out. Uh, we are starting to get caught up on giveaways, by the way, uh, both uh, myself uh, and our, some of our uh, distributors are a bit behind going to two champs and that sort of thing. So bear with us a little bit and we'll get those out to you um, as soon as we can as well. So make sure you reach out. But thanks again to uh, uh, Go Bubble and congrats to Agent Pyra. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Should we talk about Ochoa? Oh, we have uh, before, another giveaway. before we do that, oh, let's yeah. start our second giveaway. We're going to start... Uh, the giveaway for the Go Build a uh, Linear Actuator Kit. Uh, and the keyword for this will be one word, and it's Go Extend. One word. I'll type that in the chat quickly. Go Extend. So this was the kit you've probably seen a thousand times this year on so many robots. <laughs> but my, it worked my really well for him. Another robot. Works awesome. I don't think there's an event, an event that I went to that I didn't see at least a dozen of these. <laughs> Whether it's one team using four, teams using <laughs> one. Oh man, was that a royal blue roast? No, there was a local team at, <laughs> at Walnut Hills that used, or the Cincinnati regional that used four on one robot, I believe. Oh jeez, so there were multiple who used a lot. Was royal blue using more than one? Uh, I think they had at least three. It's probably four. They had a lot. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of money. It was. But hey, as long as it supports our great supporters, go build a. <laughs> you could always go custom. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to our Ochoa division. So this year's Ochoa division was probably the more peaceful side of champs. Um, there weren't a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, action, as we saw in Edison. And it was a little lower scoring. Um, we only broke Houston's world record. A couple, it, we did break Houston's world record, but we only broke Edison's first. So, stink, stink. Uh, qualification matches were less eventful. 
We had some higher scores, but nothing quite as high scoring as Edison. Uh, after the dust settled, we had a, some weird rankings. <laughs> so 83-93, uh, the giant Diane Symphalic Brainstem Robotics team took first. Um, they were one of two undefeated teams, along with 89, 86-99, the League of Extraordinary Roboticists. 16166, Watts Up, was in third. They were one of those international teams who just hit the nail on the head this year. And then in fourth, we had 28-18, G-Force. So, Ochoa rankings were weird. Like, weird. Um, we had 83-93 made sense as first ranked. They were really freaking good on Crater. Um, and then League, League of Extraordinary Roboticists were interesting. Um, they had a very, very strange robot, so you can see it up on the screen as the red depot side robot. And while it, they were fine, um, they didn't feel like the second-ranked alliance captain in Ochoa. Fine. So, yeah. Moving into our picks, we saw that 86-99 League of Extraordinary Roboticists really wanted a crater team. They wanted a hard carry. So they picked 84-17 uh, Electric Legends, who were ranked pretty high as well. And I was surprised to not see them as a captain. And then elected to play themselves as Depot and play 84-17 every match. Which I think made sense. That was a good call by them. They then... Oh, G-Force, 28-18. First picked Frogbots, 46-34 who I believe are a first-time Worlds appear this year, which is really awesome to see them getting a first pick at Worlds, and they did really, really well. I then, think previously they've struggled to get out of ESR. Which, yeah. Yeah. I think they were the highest OPR team who didn't advance out of ESR for, like, two years. I think that's right, yeah. Was, we, were, we were in the same hotel as them last year at ESR and practiced with them. They... Their robot was really solid this year, especially for somebody who I hadn't heard of until Chance. They did very strong. What did you guys think of uh, Electric Legends? I kind of thought that they were ranked lower than they probably should have been. I think so, too. Looking at just average scores from our scouting data, they were really strong. I believe they were the top-ranked in our division. Um yeah, the the biggest kind of my biggest pet peeve about their robot was it wasn't really built to have a partner um, because they drove on, over, under the lander, which it made it pretty hard for any depot robots to score at the same time as them. And I know they had some issues with that finding a good second pick. It looks like based on OPR they would have been ranked above Brainstem even, but I think mm -hmm. it looks like second or third, possibly no, it looks like fourth, third or fourth based on OPR. Yeah. They were very strong. Um, uh, next up, we had 16166, our third-ranked captain, Watts Up. They first picked 10635, Unknown Element from Illinois. So they played Crater all through Qualls, and when they were picked by 16166, they switched over to Depot, which was a really interesting strategy. So, Nathan, do you know if they played um, Crater or Depot at Illinois? I think oh, God. I'm being put on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I feel like they were with they were, first, right? They were with us, so um, okay. I should know this. Um, <laughs> I believe that they only played uh, Crater. Uh, yep. I know that in, yeah, they only played Crater because uh, they were actually the first pick of the uh, winning alliance at Illinois State, and they played in every single match. Uh, Turbocharge and us switched out. For sure. So it was interesting. I did not expect them to play Depot for elimination matches, but they did pretty darn well. We can see him up on the blue alliance. This is their Depot side here. Just kind of matching, almost matching cycles with Electric Legends. They did very well. Um, we saw a it's lot. Definitely... Of... Go ahead. So we saw more competitive arm bots than I expected to. There were a lot of very, very strong ones, especially in uh, Ochoa semifinals. Well, it's definitely... It's definitely interesting to see two arm bots pulling from the same crater, one of which on depot for the opposing alliance, and then there's bound to be some kind of interaction at some point. <laughs> for and, sure. and I, I think uh, specifically for Turbocharge, one of the things that credits them uh, and helped them is they barely changed their robot from state, where I know as a lot of teams probably made some major modifications, um, and their drivers are just awesome. They previously were a Bex team, um, mm -hmm. and they transferred over. Uh, and they're 
be a driver is just kind of crazy in terms of just practice, 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 practice. And that's exactly what you need, especially in this game where every single second and mess up will cost you a match. For sure. I was surprised when they didn't get picked. They seemed very strong in quals, at least. So. Oh, man. And then up we have back around the draft. We had 83-93. First picked 7182. It was Mechanical Paradox Cubed ranked 46th. Oh, so <laughs> I meant to mention this up on the video. We saw uh, 8417 accidentally looks like hit unknown element, which had some effect later in the later in the match. So they meant they were not able to play finals three, which definitely changed some of WhatsApp's strategies. But we saw 8393 first picked a really low ranking team comparatively, who had a pretty darn hard match schedule, but it ended up as a really really solid depot bot which I was happy with. And then second around the draft for their second pick, they picked my team, 72-36. So it was, that was kind of the alliance in Ochoa that felt really, really hard to beat because they had two of the better depot bots in the division and a really strong crater bot where we saw like 84-17 kind of got sucked up by a not as competitive depot bot. And we saw 16-166 ended up getting their depot bot broken. So, I made a really interesting finals. Um, yeah, 1v4 ended in just two matches. So that was Brainstem against GeForce. Uh, match one ended 497 to 434. So that was Brainstem Mechanical Paradox. And then match two ended with 542 to Blues 414. So something about the first ranked in Ochoa was they had... Their first pick was really, really similar in performance to their second pick, which is really rare at tournaments and meant that their scores to their second pick was were pretty comparable a lot of the times. Um, 2v, 2v3 was a really close matchup with 84-17's alliance facing off against the Romanian slash Illinois alliance, captained by 16166. Uh, Red won, so Turbo, er, Electric Legends alliance won 522 to 371. The disconnect on blue and match two went to the blue alliance by 40 points. Um, but like we talked about, 8417 ended up breaking unknown elements arm, which meant that WhatsApp had to play depot for finals three. And along with 15975 disconnecting in finals three, it meant Red Alliance for sure got that win, moving on to division finals. Where 1v2 faced off. Uh, Red Alliance, we just talked about in the Blue Alliance. Their second pick I haven't talked about yet was Team 9872, um, Informal Logic. So, man, finals match one, we saw Red Alliance score the Ochoa record of 577 and with 10 points and penalties, so 567. The second match, we saw swing in favor of Blue with just like 30 points difference. It was very, very tight. And in finals three, we saw red breaking 500 again, scoring 519 to blues 460. So that finals were really, really crazy from being, <laughs> yeah. Um, a funny story that I have from finals was we disconnected right out of, out of auto. So, well, right before we scored, scored our gold mineral in auto. Um, so as a joke, in probably November, we added to our code to have a text-to-speech on the robot controller phone say, Epic Gamer Moment, R-M-A-O-X-D, every time we deposited. And, like, we just forgot about it, turned the phone volume down. Um, in finals two, that program crashed and meant we lost 20 seconds of teleop and the rest of autonomous. <laughs> so we lost finals because of a bad joke. <laughs> Not really. We lost finals two. But Epic Gamer Moment, R-M-A-O-X-D is amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was something we all kind of just stood there and we're like oh whoops we forgot to remove that uh <laughs> that is the most epic gamer like the irony that you were trying to make an epic gamer <laughs> moment but an epic gamer moment was made out of your epic gamer moment attempt <laughs> that's it awesome bad. it was so, um yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was just gonna kind of unpack. You just, you went on. Ethan went on a spiel about everything Ochoa, which was awesome. But I kind of just unpack this for a moment. Um, 
what what do you guys just think about the Ochoa division just kind of overall? Um, because I think any alliance really could have taken it. Really, the one or two alliance could have taken it. Uh, yeah. Maybe another alliance. I think Ochoa was really well balanced versus an Edison. There was a lot of powerhouse teams. We kind of just knew, like, mm-hmm. Landbros are going to take it. It's kind of, Landbros and uh, Glutenfree are going to take it. It's kind of obvious. It was definitely a toss-up, but it was it was kind of easy to see that the strongest crater bot being 83-93 was sure to come out on top with their with their ability to just hammer in cycles. Mm-hmm. It, their two auto cycles were just were really really huge especially when when they worked they were a really big advantage because it's just like you're two and a half cycles up every start of the match and along with their first pick ran depot cycles as well in auto they had one or two that were fairly consistent so i think those just like when you're starting three cycles up when you're starting 30 points up it's a really big advantage Totally, that, yeah. It's definitely it's definitely uh, hard to look at the live scoring right after Otto as a driver and then seeing that you're already down by a few cycles, especially in an Elims match. Puts yeah. a little bit of extra weight on you. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we're going to jump into top 25 super shortly, but before, yeah. I, I have a quick question, a couple of questions for Andrew and Ethan. Um, so... Keep your answer short, because let's try to speed through this. How do you guys think the tournament ran overall, just in general? A lot of good volunteers. Mm-hmm. Matches were in pretty fast. Um, aside from, like, Dioth sucked, but they were handled pretty darn well, I think. So, volunteers really, it, they made it really work well. Um, otherwise, big divisions kind of suck for rankings, as we saw kind of on both sides. So, 80 teams in a division makes it hard with this ranking system to have really top-tier captains. Yep, I agree. Uh, is there anything off the top of your head that you guys would want to improve about the tournament? Uh, rankings. I, <laughs> I, thought I, the setup, I thought the setup was a little wonky. I, I kind of preferred last year's setup with the fields in the back for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, walkway right in front of the fields really sucked, especially for our scouters. They complained a lot. <laughs> So yeah, I, I'm just gonna jump yeah. in and say I had I wasn't there last year, so I don't know how it was. But I had some people in FRC actually tell me, ask me first, hey, is this flipped from last year? And I'm like, what? Well, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but they really liked it actually, in that uh, it was more open and kind of uh, obvious where FTC was. They said that to them coming from the FRC area, it was just like hidden in the back corner because the yeah. fields were flipped. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, so. Just kind of throwing this out there as a crazy idea. What do you guys think of uh, first expanded worlds to 200 teams and four divisions? Mm. I think it'd become uh, a little overflown like FRC is, or how I view FRC to be with a lot of teams qualifying and not being as much of a feat to make it to that elite, elite group of the world championship. That's fair. I per- Right off the bat, let's see. Four divisions scares me because it's more chance for one to have two really insane teams and the rest having one or maybe zero but more teams at champs i'm always a fan of because it means advancements better i think it'd be interesting if they just make one mega division that would be where <laughs> it's oh, an idea yeah. um yeah, I don't know. I think 200 with four divisions would be cool. It's more teams going. Biggest thing that I would love is more teams in the limbs. Uh, this way you'd send just uh, t- under 25% of the teams, where now we're sending 13% of teams to a limbs. True. Whatever. Um, so the last thing that we have to say is congrats to everyone on Ford Field. Uh, Ethan, if you want to give us like 30 seconds, how was that experience? Uh, Ethan was on the finalist alliance. Um, uh, Ford how- Field was pretty darn well run. Um, It was nice to get a chance to just kind of chat with some of the really, really high-end event staff that helped make Ford Field really a lot better this year. Um, Like, their penalties, uh, especially that sometimes my alliance earned, were called well, I think. And generally, like, people don't look back at this Ford Field and say, yo, why'd the wrong alliance win again? Which seemed pretty common from the last couple of years so i think i was very impressed by it it was run pretty well and overall the experience was 
pretty solid. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. It was pretty awesome. Were you on the field, Ethan? So um, you got to bring five um, pit crew, and then seven additional people could go sit on the stands. So I, I went and sat on the stands. <laughs> but I was on Ford Field. I was not mostly allowed to stand up, though. Makes sense. Um, so, and uh, as a member of Recharge just pointed out in the chat, the bleachers were in a terrible spot <laughs> for viewing. Um, yeah. Maybe they'll fix that bad. for next year or go sit in the stands. Sorry that you made Ford Field and you couldn't see. <laughs> um, it's all right. I got to sit by all my friends, so it was worth it. Uh, so we'd like to uh, give a big shout out to 9971 Land Bros for winning, along with their first pick, 11-11-5 uh, or 11-11-5 gluten-free, uh, as well as 10091 Nyan Robotics from Illinois, uh, represent Illinois. That was the first time an Illinois team, uh, if my stats are correct, the first time an Illinois team has ever made it to a limbs, uh, or made it to Ford Field or the finals field and won. Um, so and I believe awesome. we're the first. I I think we're the first Iowa robotics team to be in a World Finals. Yes, I uh, that is true. Your affiliate partner told me that as well. Um, <laughs> wow. So yeah, so Midwest represent. Man. Um. All right. So yeah, totally Midwest represent. All right. Let's get uh, into our top twenty-five. But first, let's roll for the winner of our second giveaway. Yeah, so that was that low side U channel bundle, and I I really oh sorry that was linear actuator kit excuse me. This is um, linear actuator kit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna roll for that. Uh, the winner uh, once again you need to type in go extend. Uh, this is what you need to type in, and the winner for that is gonna be uh, Talavani, I believe it's pronounced. Um, congratulations uh, for winning. You are a subscriber, which means that we. That really did for you. So congratulations once again. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks again to Go Build a, uh, for some amazing, amazing giveaways. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ready emotes in chat. Uh, congrats once again. Please make sure you reach out to me under first updates now under disc or in our Discord or here on Twitch so you can claim your prize. For sure. All right. And uh, right before we get into the top 25, let's kick off our third giveaway, which is the fancy schmancy new Go Build a Strafe chassis kit. Uh just a heads up, I'm sure you saw the render online. Uh, we will not be giving away the fancy Mechanum wheels that were uh, in that picture. Uh, you just get the kit, no wheels. I believe the wheels are coming soon. Ethan, you might know more. Uh, I do not. So you'll have to keep guessing. What, so, what you see on screen right now is what you'll win. Yep. That is correct. Uh, but from the email that we got from GoBuilda, Mechanum wheels will be coming. So... Patience, my young Padawans. Uh, so the keyword for that will be go build a or go home. I am mean, so that is uh, four separate words. Go build a space or space go space home. So good luck. Um, all right. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.